I, it's Wayne from howtofish.com.au and I, just recently I've been fishing down at the Arrow River near my house. Um, I caught carp there quite a bit but I've also been catching eels. Now in the past I've been trying to avoid those because they're, they're slimy, a bit hard to handle but I've been speaking to a neighbour about this and about the fish I'd caught and when I mentioned eels, catching eels, his eyes lit up. So he's, uh, Tony is a, he's basically born in Italy and over there, eel was one of the delicacies that they used to catch and it would be a, a Sunday meal or part of a Sunday meal. He used to, family used to love it. He loves it. So I said that uh, I'd catch him one. In actual fact, he, he insisted that I catch him one next time I went fishing. And so I thought I'll do a bit of research into this, work out how to, uh, to catch these things, how to target them. And so what I'm about to show you is how I went about targeting eels so that in the next outing, and I only had a couple of hours as I always do, the next outing I managed to, uh, to hook quite a good size eel for him. He was delighted and I was pretty happy that I was actually targeting them and then actually hooking them. Now one thing I found is that uh, the, the eels love worms, especially big worms. So I was using my European night crawlers on the hook and one or two big lively worms. The great thing about the night crawlers is they keep moving all the time. They're very tough, hard to get off and they keep moving. Also I put something from my spice rack in there. So this is my fish magnet. I use that to add a little bit more scent because these are, they hunt by smell and they're very good at zeroing in on your bait if it's got a strong smell. So that really seemed to help. Now, you, many people are probably saying, why would you target eels? Well, I've had a lot of feedback on how good eels are to eat. And Tony, my neighbor, insisted that, uh, not only did I catch him one, but then he insisted that my wife and I come to dinner at their place. We went there, we had a, a fish meal. The main meal was fish, the entree was eel. And I've got to say, I was really surprised. It was beautiful, beautifully prepared, and it's a rich, delicate flesh. So what I was using was a size four hook, so I could put a couple of big worms on it, and worms were a fantastic bait. I've just got a loop-to-loop -loop join there, so I've got a piece, this is actually a fluorocarbon leader here tied to, to that, because sometimes where I'm fishing is very shallow, the water's clear, so the line can be seen, and I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, and then a loop to loop to my main line. On my main line, I just have a, a stop, a line stop there, so that I have a running sinker, which will stop at the line stop. But you'll notice this is a very small bean sinker. And uh, I've gone down from that because I got, had more success when I had the lighter weights there. Uh, it seems that the more that they can play around and not feel resistance, the more likely they are to bite. But the only thing I did do and I've kept doing is having another bead further up here so that there's a limit to how, how much line they can take before they actually hook themselves. That seemed to work pretty well. It's pretty interesting the size of the eels you can catch in the, the local waterways. So by targeting properly, I thought I might have a chance of getting something of a decent size. So the first thing to do is get my sieve together with a sack that I was going to sieve over, just an old bucket to put the sieve, sieved items in. And the sieved items were going to be from my worm farm. So this is the castings left by the worms. I transported all of the worms out of this worm farm into another one. So, and I'd let this one dry out. So what I've got here is pure worm castings. After quite some time, the worms have turned all the organic food, vegetables, scraps, things like that, into their castings. So this is effectively worm droppings. They smell heavily of worm, and I know it's a strong attractant. So what I was going to do, is just use this seedling tray to sieve out the lighter worm castings, get rid of the rubbish on top, so everything too big at the shells, and garbage and stuff that is no good just basically goes back. And I kept sieving this out a number of times until I had about a kilo of this stuff. Then I knew that I had enough of these castings to act as a great, a great uh, burly, attract the eels in. The strong smell of worms, something they really love, was going to work for me. And it didn't take long to do this. So this is one great use for your worm castings in your worm farm. The castings themselves are a great organic fertilizer, but they're also a fantastic burley, and it's really easy to produce. Once I had enough of the castings, 
I just uh, lifted the sack up and poured them into my bucket. This uh, using the sack is really, really simple and uh, makes them easy to use. And then from that, I had them in the bucket and then I was going to tip this into a plastic bag. It was easier to tip them into the bucket first and then tip those into a plastic bag to take with me. Trying to go from the sack to the plastic bag just meant that I was going to spill more. So this is really simple. Just turning this over, tipping it in, and you're right to go. Uh, and this was quite a bit. This is, I did this a couple of times. I had at least a, a, a kilo of this stuff. Beautiful, rich worm castings for my burley. Now, just because you're using the worm castings and you're using this rig and you're using worms doesn't mean you won't catch other fish. And of course, there's always carp in our rivers and that's what I had caught here. But I, look, I don't mind catching fish. It's uh, all good fun. This was another carp and it's great just to remove those from the waterway and have a bit of fun doing it. Something is biting. <laughs> 